is kind of, uh, we're just gonna... Take your just time. one second, stay with us, come on. Take your time, Ahmed. Ta'ala, Ahmed, 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 Baddil. Ta'ala, ta'ala. There, what you're seeing right now are, are pictures, Kamal, of the, um, of the tear gas. We're just gonna switch out just one second our cameraman so that he can actually try to bring you these uh, unprecedented pictures. But as you can imagine, the tear gas is making it very difficult sure. for us to see. So there are the images that you're, you're seeing right now. You can imagine what it's like for the protesters. I mean, we're several dozen, floor, we're several dozen feet above uh, the street level from our studio. You could see these uh, pictures. Uh, and now that area has kind of been dispersed as a result of the tear gas. You can see some of the people at the hotel trying to run, and uh, you I'm just gonna have the camera show you what the view is like. This is the Hilton Hotel in Cairo. Many of the tourists that were standing on the balconies watching this unfold have gone inside as a result of the tear gas. And on the streets, some of the protesters that were really gathered around us, this scene, what you're seeing, is where they were just praying. Uh, several hundred protesters were praying just a short while ago. Now it's completely uh, been dispersed. They have gone under the bridge. I don't know if you can make it out as a result of the silhouette there, but most of them have now gathered underneath yeah, so. that bridge where on top of it the traffic has really come to a standstill. You can see some of the vehicles actually trying to, they've stopped, they're trying to pull back. It doesn't seem like they want to go uh, much further. So it is a, a very critical showdown that's taking place here right around this very critical intersection for the city. Extraordinary, extraordinary stuff from Ayman Mohideen. Live from the Al Jazeera Bureau in Cairo, you saw how close the tear gas was getting there. It was being fired in the vicinity, Eamon saying that, and I think we'll see it now, the Hilton Hotel is just there, and a huge crowd was dispersed using the tear gas, the police using the tear gas to disperse that crowd, and they're now under that bridge there, and the shot widens out. You see, well, it looks calm there, but I tell you earlier, you saw tear gas canisters coming down, you saw smoke. I think there's still smoke off in the distance there, actually, sort of left of your screen. We saw water cannon. We saw an armoured police vehicle dispersing a crowd on that bridge in the foreground. And then, incredibly, an armored, that same armoured vehicle turned back by the people. By the people. They turned the back. It really is quite a scene we're seeing today in Cairo, and, and we've got to make the point again that this is happening across the country as well. But while we're talking about Cairo, let's show you satellite maps to give you an idea of things. 6th of October Bridge, where protesters have been gathering, it has been called the Spinal Cord of Cairo, with half a million people passing over it every day. That's where we've been seeing some pictures. The al Azhar Mosque, a major centre for religion and theology, it is here that the uprising began in 1919 against the British. That's another interesting point there. More protests in a neighbourhood near the presidential palace. Demonstrators calling for an end to President Hosni Mubarak's rule. And then Eamon telling us earlier about Tahrir Square, a clamp down there. Tahrir literally translates as liberation, liberation square. It has been cut off, though, by police. But crowds have been trying to get to that area. What do you know, Eamon, of what's been happening in Tahrir Square as well? Well, uh, come on, what I can tell you is from where we were earlier out uh, today in the street, we began on the western part of the city and tried to cross. The bridges, as I was saying earlier, have been completely closed off to mostly uh, vehicles. These cars that are coming are really, it's a, it's a rare scene to see some of these cars and, cars. and in fact, what's happening is many of them are actually driving on the wrong side of the road. So there is a sense of chaos that is on this bridge. Cars are driving in different directions. People are finding themselves trapped. Now, what that really means is that the police cordons that have been set off on these bridges have been broken because if the cars are able to enter and move around these bridges uh, in either direction, it is an indication that the barricades that the police have set up throughout the evening and early in the morning have been now completely broken in various parts of the city. What I can tell you in terms of where we are, we are just several hundred meters away from Liberation Square or Medan al Tahrir. That specific square, a very critical uh, open space for the city of Cairo, both symbolically and functionally. Symbolically, it has the Cairo governor's office. It also has Egypt's National Museum, which is one of the major tourist destinations in the country. It has several other important government buildings within a short distance away. And more importantly, it is the symbolic heart of Cairo. What happened on Tuesday was that the thousands of protesters who had gathered and overtook that particular square, the government saw that as a very, very strong show of force. What has happened today, uh, protesters wanted to converge on that square once again. We know from the protesters that we were out with throughout the day and that we, we've been speaking to, was that the plan 
for the, wor the worshippers leaving Friday prayers were to make their way into the heart of the city. They were supposed to be gathering from dozens of mosques all across Cairo. What ended up happening as they made their way into the heart of the city, they weren't able to make it into Liberation Square. The closest thing to Liberation Square or Medan al-Tahrir is where we are standing, which is another square just adjacent to it. Unfortunately, our camera or our window only overlooks the Nile, so what you're seeing is that bridge. And that is where the protesters and the police have been clashing for the better part of two hours now, police right, and, using and tear gas and uh, stun gas. And what we're seeing now, Eamon, I don't know if you're watching the picture as well, at street level, I think that's the Hilton Hotel you were describing earlier in the background. What's striking me with these pictures right now is you are seeing all walks of life. People there giving the peace sign, but it is people from all walks of life. It's young men, I saw women there, this, you've seen children on their father's shoulders. This is literally a popular uprising. Kamal, to say the least, if there is one word to describe all of this, it is very, very popular in the sense that it is everyone. It is a populist uprising, if you will. It is not being led by a single political party. It is not being led by a political organization. We were at Friday prayers earlier today. The scene was of women, men, elderly. We saw many parents bringing their children. I spoke to one man who brought with him his children, and I asked him, aren't you afraid? Why are you bringing your kids exactly. here today? knowing that this could happen. And he told me he wanted his kids to know that there was a better future for them, that he came and brought his son with him in defiance. And this is what is making this particular uh, protest and this uprising extremely, extremely unprecedented according to the people we speak to. These pictures, the latest ones we're getting in from Cairo, street level near that 6th of October bridge where you see the tear gas and the effects of the tear gas, it has to be said. This is the human side of what's happening today. These tens of thousands of protesters that have come out of the street. And this is the result. And while people attend to the wounded and those incapacitated, it goes on in the background. Now this is interesting, remember we saw the aerial shots before of a armoured vehicle pushing back the protesters. Let's stay with this man there, obviously quite badly injured. But perhaps this is what we saw earlier, that armoured vehicle driving back the crowds initially. Let's have a look. These pictures coming in raw to us as well, we don't know exactly what's coming through of them, so forgive the vagueness of how I may sound at times. That's a standoff of extraordinary proportions. People up against an armoured vehicle and then throwing rocks at it. And then that armoured vehicle pushed back and pretty much forced to retreat by the people throwing rocks. This is, definitely what, this is definitely what we saw earlier from uh, the Al Jazeera Bureau balcony, our live camera shot, which captured that moment. This tells it, though. This tells the human side of the story, the people, the passion, the anger amongst them at street level that they're willing to take on an armoured vehicle with rocks. if I can use that word, being given to people to deal with tear gas, use Coca-Cola apparently to ward off the effects. People here just using whatever they've got, tissues, rags. Blood being spilled quite literally there. Shadi Hamid in the studio with me. I haven't spoken to you in a while, but what do you say? <laughs> well, uh, it's one thing is clear. Egypt will never go back to the way it was before. Um, so whatever happens, whether or not it ends up in revolution or not, Egyptians will never be the same. Egypt will never be the same. 80 million Egyptians have seen what their countrymen are capable of doing. Everyone knows that there's a protest going on, and it's the biggest one in Egyptian history. They see it. They know it. 
and that the psychology changes. The barrier of fear is definitively broken. And um, there's there's always been talk. Um, Egyptians are passive.